In these next few videos, we're going to explore how to create a comic book graphic novel from scratch, even if you're not a great artist, with the help of some modern technology tools on the computer, such as 3D character posing and modeling tools. Even though we're not going to be drawing the art the traditional way by hand, we still need to follow a plan. We still need to have a workflow similar to traditional comic books. And the first step for that is learning how to read a comic book. Then we're going to look at how to take that and move it into writing a script for a comic book, because comic books are very similar to movies in a lot of ways. And finally, we're going to look at how to lay out or rough out the panels that we need before we start creating the final product. So let's get started. First, we need to get familiar with how comic books are read. So let's take a look at this example here. Here's a comic book, Captain America, maybe familiar to you. And uh, what, the way comic books are presented is in a series of panels that see shapes, usually rectangular, but not always. And usually they contain images, but sometimes the border is broken like this. It might seem silly, but not everybody has a lot of experience reading comic books, and we need to familiarize ourselves with the basic flow so we'll know how to lay out the panels ourselves. We're going to look at just simple, basic panel layouts that have been used for many decades. Uh, sometimes artists break these rules with more unique or creative layouts, but we're going to stick just to the basics. We read comic books just like regular printed text. That means in the United States and in English-speaking countries, we're meant to look at the panels from left to right and from top to bottom. So when we get to the right side of the page, we move down to the next row of panels, just like you would move down to the next line of print in a book. That's not always the case for all countries, but it's the case for many countries. For example, in Japan, their printed text is written in reverse from ours, from uh, right to left. So in Japan, you would read the comic book from the top and then down to the right side and move your eyes left. But in English, you start at the top panels, top left corner, move, scan your eyes across, and then go move down and to the left. Now in some cases, when you get to the side, you'll just move straight down. As you can see here, we've already seen this panel on the left, so we would just move down to the next panel over. There are some cases where it gets a little tricky. For example, here in Manga Studio, we have a basic layout of panels here, and we would start at the top left panel up in the corner, and then move to the right. And when we're finished, we would move back down. And within the panels, you're going to be reading left to right also. So you need to keep that in mind when you put words or dialogue, little word bubbles and things. People are going to read the ones that are higher up at the top and further over to the left before they read the other ones. Then we would get down to this panel. And when we're done reading this, where do we go? Do we go to the right or down? Normally we would go to the right, but if we do that, then we're going to have to bring our eyes back left again to finish the page. And that's like reading backwards. So in this case, a quick scan of the page would let you know you probably want to move your eyes down first and then continue to the right. So sometimes it's not completely obvious, but you don't want to have to read the page backwards by scanning your eyes to the left to get the later information on the page. Movies, comic books benefit from having a script. In fact, even though a comic book can be printed and has text in it, it's really more like a movie than it is like a standard written book in many ways. This is because it's a visual medium. So the way the story is told is through images and through dialogue, just like in movies. If a character is excited or angry or upset, you have to show that through facial expression and body language. You don't describe it with words. And the same goes for the setting and the scenery, as you can see here. In fact, many movies actually create their own sort of comic book to plan out the visuals before production begins. These are called storyboards. You can see an example here. So it makes sense that, like movies, comic books would have a script. However, movie scripts have a very specific standard format, like this. This is not true of comic books. We could write the script in the exact same format as a movie, but for our case, it might be better to break the script down into panels and describe the visuals, word bubbles, sound effects, and captions for each panel on the page. So let's see how we would do that. In this case, I'm going to be converting the last chapter of the book, Mara, Daughter of the Nile, into a comic book version. First, we're going to decide on the number of panels we're going to use to tell the story. Sometimes you'll need several panels in a row just to show when action is happening, such as a fight sequence and which important events happen in there. Other times you may be able to summarize important details such as conversations using just a few panels. In this example, we're going to summarize the entire chapter by breaking it into only two pages totaling 10 to 12 panels. So that could be four panels on one page and six on another, or maybe five and six. Just like in a storybook, the first panel of a new story or chapter or scene often starts by showing us the setting. In a TV show or a movie, this would be called the establishing shot. And it's often a wide-angle view to show where things are happening and put us in the location so we can imagine it better. 
in this example, we have an, a very wide or extremely wide or extremely long shot to show a lot of buildings and no people. And then it zooms in a little closer for a slightly closer establishing shot, including the character now barely visible. We'll go over different shots or views in a few moments, but for now let's plan on establishing the settings starting with the first panel. Start by describing what you will see in the panel. In this case, we're establishing the setting and showing silent actions, so we don't need any dialogue or captions or words. We'll talk about those in just a minute. If we were to describe what kind of shot this is, we could call it a very wide shot because based on the description, it shows a wide open view of the scenery from far away, but it does have a few people in it. If we zoomed even further out, such as the example here of the city, we would call that an extreme wide shot or an extreme long shot. Now we can write these out, but you can also use abbreviations for them once you understand what the different shots are. VLS would be very long shot. You could put XLS or ELS for extreme lo uh, long shot. All you need to do is remember that this is going to determine uh, the size and the shape of the panel. Unlike movies, where it's always going to be the same size and shape screen, uh, comic books can have different size and shape panels. So we're probably going to want to use a fairly large, wide panel to establish the setting. Next in our story, our protagonists kiss, and then they have a conversation. We would need to show this using more than one panel because you can't talk while you're kissing. So panel two could show Chef 2 holds Mara carefully and kisses her lingeringly. That's basically exactly how it's described in the story. Again, no words are being spoken, so we're going to leave this box blank. Um, and we would call this a different type of shot because the focus now is on the characters and their kiss. So we want a close-up or a CU that would be just big enough to show their faces kissing. Sometimes you might even use a panel that shows just one body part, such as a character's eyes looking at something or their hands grabbing something. Here are some examples. Okay, so here's examples of different angles and different levels of closeness. For example, an extreme close-up of the eyes. There are a few other examples of shot types here. This would be the establishing shot being extremely long shot or extreme wide shot, and then gradually getting closer and closer. If you get close enough that it's only part of a face or a body, that's an extreme close-up. A face is generally a big close-up or a close-up, and there's everything in between, such as a medium close-up and a long shot. Generally, long shots have whole bodies, close-ups have part of a body in there, maybe a couple of people sometimes as well. In this case, it's only showing one. And you can also think of different angles that are being used. So sometimes you can have angles looking down from above or looking up from below, which makes it a little more dynamic and interesting and can make the characters look more powerful or more scary or menacing, or it can imply where the characters are looking towards, such as up at a building. We'll follow the kiss with another slightly wider shot in panel three where the two characters begin talking. So this panel could be described as a medium shot or medium close-up. As you can see, medium close-up is sort of the shoulders and up, whereas a medium shot is from about the waist up. Both of these shots will allow for two characters. The medium shot would be the best for two characters standing side by side having a conversation. So we'll call this a medium shot or MS. You don't have to write both the abbreviation and the long words. You can choose which one you want to write. Okay, so let's put our description in there of what we're going to see. And in this case, there will be dialogue or people speaking. This box here says dialogue captions and SFX. Uh, these three things would all be words written on the panel, but they serve different purposes though. Captions are placed in a small box like this, written over or inside of the panel. They could be someone's speech, uh, but usually they're used for things like telling the reader information, such as when or where things are happening, meanwhile, or you could give a date and a place. Okay, these are the kinds of things. Dialogue is people speaking, so we would place that into a uh, word bubble or word balloon. And, but if there are thoughts that are not spoken out loud, you could use something like a thought balloon. SFX stands for sound effects, things like whoosh or boom or crunch, bleep, bloop, bleep, tick, tick, tick. These are onomatopoeias that are generally used in action sequences for, like fighting. In this case, we only have dialogue, so we're just going to write it like a script. You would put the character's name and what are they going to say.
If you did have a caption or a sound effect, you could put those right in the same section. Caption would generally go first, since it's going to be overlapping everything else. So, for example, we could put thieves or whatever the location was. You don't need those very often, though. Uh, you can also add sound effects into this section by just putting SFX and describing what you'd need there. So if somebody was swinging a sword, you might put whoosh if it missed somebody, for example, or a clang if it hit another sword or a rock. We would simply need to continue this process for each panel. In this case, we would use another seven to nine panels to finish the chapter, so we'd have to choose carefully what the important moments are in the story and depict those in a logical order. Now that we've determined what each panel is going to contain, it's time to sketch out the panels have a basic idea of what they'll look like. In our case, we're going to end up making the finished product using computer models, but the sketches will help us compose those scenes in the computer. First, we can start by choosing a template that will allow us to work with our panel sequence we have planned. Remember, different types of views will work better in different shapes and sizes of panels. You'll probably want the first establishing shot to be a fairly large panel like this. Large panels can also be used where you'll need to show a lot of characters or a lot of words or dialogue, or for very crucial important moments in the story where something dramatic ha happens, such as a character getting attacked. You'd want that to be bigger to draw attention to it, for example. So some of these would work. Anything that has sort of a wider shot on the top would be an okay frame to use. Ones that have smaller panels on the top wouldn't be great for establishing shots or for large action shots. You don't need to be a professional artist to do this part, but you do need to generally show where the bodies are and how they'll be posed, and try to draw some basic facial expressions too if you can. Stick figures won't work here, but you can use basic outlines for the head and body, such as these oval and block body shapes. Also remember that when you do your dialogue bubbles, they're going to be read from top to bottom, left to right within the panel, just like we read in a book. So if you have your character on the left that's going to respond second instead of first, you'd want the character on the right to have higher up word bubbles and the one on the left to have a lower word bubble as their response. You want to position the word bubbles so they read from top to bottom and left to right. And that's about it. Once we've sketched out all our plans, it will be time for the real fun to begin.